Bonan Ziwa. That is how you say hello in Romanian, which would have been spoken by Count Dracula. And in this video, we begin our lesson on counters. First, let's look at a few counters in action. We'll dive into the design details in later videos, but for now, just focus on the overall behavior. Here, we have a 4-bit counter. It uses four flip-flops, one for each bit. There is a driving system clock down here. On each clock cycle, the output binary count is changing. It is a bit difficult to read. The most significant bit is at the bottom, and the least significant bit is up top. If we tilt our heads and stare long enough, we can see how it is doing a straight binary count from 0000 through 1111. Easier to see is when we condense the circuit into a device symbol and use a hex display to watch the count. Here we have a divide by 6 counter. It counts from decimal 0 through 5 and then recycles back to 0 and repeats the count. This will run forever if we let it. But do you notice anything strange? It looks like a clean count when leaving an even number, say from 4 to 5. But when leaving an odd number, say from 3 to 4, there are brief incorrect numbers. These are called glitches and are a hallmark of asynchronous counters. It does eventually reach the correct number and remains at that number for the bulk of the time but those glitches could cause issues in a circuit. We will explore the cause of glitches and a method for working around them in a later lesson. Now down here we see a custom counter. It cycles through the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. Although it may not be a typical order of numbers, it still is considered a counter because it cycles through the same sequence over and over. And check this out. We can reverse the count by flipping the switch. Now notice how the count goes 7, 5, 3, 2, and then recycles back to 7. Also notice that we don't see glitches in this display. That is because this was designed as a synchronous counter. The slide summarizes what we just witnessed in the simulator. A counter is any sequential circuit that goes through a regular sequence of states. As such, it is usually composed of flip-flops, and the overall structure of the circuit will be very similar to Mealy and Moore machines. The most common counters follow a straight count up, such as from decimal 0 through 7. As we will see, it actually isn't difficult to adapt that to a straight count down. These can all follow some standard schematics. But to make custom counters, we will need to work through a full design process. There are two classes of counters, asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous counters are also called ripple counters because they require signals to propagate through multiple components of the circuit, which is what causes those glitches we observed earlier. With a synchronous circuit, however, all of the flip-flops are connected to the same clock which allows for nearly simultaneous changes. Here we see a side-by-side -side comparison of the internal circuits of two binary counters. Both perform a straight count from 0 through 15. The one on the left is asynchronous. We can see this immediately by looking at the clock. The clock feeds into this top flip-flop, but none of the others. The second flip-flop must wait for its instruction from the first flip-flop. The third must wait for its instruction from the second, and so on down the line. You can start to understand why this is called a ripple counter. The counter on the right is synchronous. Notice how this single clock connects directly to each of the flip-flops. This allows for the elimination of glitches with all flip-flops changing states simultaneously. Well, no events are ever truly simultaneous, but this lets us get pretty close. Both classes of counters are commonly used. In many cases, such as the flashing of lights, glitches would be unnoticeable. In other cases, such as controlling which memory location to route data to, 
a glitch could cause serious problems. As such, we will explore both categories in the upcoming lessons.